It's Eva, or whatever. Hi, I got myself nice wet. To meet you, Snake. I'm Tatiana. Look, don't try and make yourself look sexy by being wet. Eva, you could use a towel. She said Tatiana. So could you. Well, I can use a spare eye as well. <laughs> save her there. Before I save, I thought I'll um, answer the question about you know, who is to blame for the, the downfall of gaming. Well, actually, uh, I'll tell you, but also I want to tell you what I think about Ghost Recon, but I'm going to do that another time. There's actually many people. There's actually many things at fault with this. Um, there is the religious groups who always bash on games when they try. Like uh, if you remember, Little Big Planet got delayed because of a certain song. Yeah, well done there, religious groups. Uh, <laughs> makes me. It makes me wonder why I don't follow you, but I can see why now because you're arrogant little bastards. Let's be honest. Um, there's also New Age Gamer, or the new generation of gamers, being void, vapid, and really unintelligent, <laughs> let's be honest, because all the little... I wouldn't say all of them, but I'm going to say 99% of them are. <laughs> I know, it's a bit of an unfair uh, percentage of rage, but come on, I have not met one that does not that does not like flashy things and intelligent gameplay, or any kind of way. Well, not intelligent, but... Gameplay with some actual fucking depth to it, instead of finding a game that gameplay is as deep as a kiddie's pool. And then there's also like uh, hysterical, hysterical mothers as well. Or how about that? Um, how about those two kids, right? Oops. How about those two kids that um, grab their dad's rifles and start shooting cars, and then they said Grand Theft Auto told them to do this which is bullshit I think some of you might know this case but it's Vice City but I think the biggest the biggest claim to all this the biggest um, one to uh, sort of doing this and they've been doing this for years they've been doing this since the NES days trying to exploit this is publishers because here's the thing trying to make money from a video game is nothing new let's be honest or because you see like a lot of rip-offs and so on trying to do this. Some of them could be from developers or themselves and some of them are from develop some of them are from publishers. But here's the thing. You know which you know which publishers I'm going after. EA and Activision. You know, the two money hungry bastards of the entire world. Well, actually there's mother evil powers <laughs> involved with this, you know, throughout history. Here's the thing. I don't think EA or Activision has ever read the history of how greed has destroyed uh, several men. But, as, a, as an American philosopher said, those who do not know the past are doomed to repeat it. And they probably will repeat it, and I hope they will die one day. But that's the problem, because if they do this, they may take down the gaming, in gaming industry with it. At least, we can only hope that it doesn't happen. But here's the thing, I think EA are the biggest bastards of them all. Think about it. A lot of good developers have come, and then they've got trampled all over by EA. I can just tell you the names. Westwood, the creators of um, Command & Conquer, stomped out by EA because they couldn't release the game fast enough or some other bullshit like that. And then you've got Origin Systems, and if anyone who's been part of the DOS era, which I haven't, but I have played their games before, we know how amazing developers they really are. I mean, they love their games. They were passionate on how they make those video games. Especially when they were the only company who can actually do uh, FMV games properly. I mean, properly. Uh, like, the Wing Commander series is a good example there, again. Uh, I'm sure they did other ones, but I've forgotten, but, you know, System Shock. I know it's on FMV, but they also did System Shock and introduced uh, the concept of an AI believing that it's, uh, it's God and superior to man. Which, back at that time, was never really that explored. And at that time, 
uh, I don't know when EA bought bought them. I think it's when they tried to do uh, um no way. I think they did Privateer when they were part of EA, but I know Privateer Two was then, and then it was crap, and then they did. Well, I'm sure they did another game which was absolutely crap, but oh. but then at the end they just got stomped out. And then there's the Ultima series, Ultima being probably one of the best RPG series ever, and also and also being pretty much the RPG to change RPGs really. Yeah, you know, pretty much is the first RPG that does this and does that and so on. And then, of course, EA got their hands on it, and and the company. And uh, well, you see, have you ever seen the results of Ultima Nine and Ultima Ten? And Ultima Ten being horrendous because they wanted to make Ultima Online, and they just you know ruined it. That's the thing about EA and Activision; they don't see video games like we do. To to a gamer, video games are a form of art. A form of uh, great storytelling, if if it was properly written, that is, you know, another form of storytelling, a form of entertainment, or a form of escapism from reality. Because hey, we like to play games to escape from reality or take into the boots of someone else, and you know, pretend like we're there them for a moment. Come on, there's no need to lie about that because this is what we like to do, or we just like to be challenged and. F- we like to have fun and be challenged as well, which of course the challenge part is now pretty much dead from video games. Let's be honest, very low games that actually do the challenge part, or any add any depth to it. Uh, I know, I know, but EA are the biggest bastards of them all, and you already know about Activision and what they did to Infinity Ward. Jesus, uh, and of course they still try and make Modern Warfare free, and that's. Pr- and and you know, it's got Infinity Ward's name on it, but you know it's not Infinity Ward. Come on, it's just another developing company wearing this wearing its skin. <sighs> so yeah, that's pretty much who I pretty much blame. I blame the devel- I blame the publishers for this because as I said the publishers are dirty businessmen. This is who they are. They don't see games; they see products. There's very difference between. There is a difference between a game and the product. You you find a product, you think you it's very sterile. It's the best word to describe it. Sterile. Not enough. Not really any passion to it. You don't think this was made by a development team who loves making a video game because it's their passion and they want to make a great game and continue on or make a great series and so on. And then there was a I said another one I want to put in there. And then. I just can't believe Bioware have been part of EA. I don't know if EA bought them out or they joined EA. But I had no reason why EA would buy them out because I've assumed Bioware actually did quite well for them, but for themselves, I'm not sure, because they were a great gaming company. But if you recently played the Dragon Age 2 and Mass Effect 3, you see how downhill they've gone now. Especially Dragon Age 2. What a pile of shit that was. And then... EA, I bet EA was involved with the whole um, thing about do not end Mass Effect. So they ruined our story. They ruined the years we waited for Mass Effect 3. You know, but I'll stop continuing on with that. I'm just showing that as an example that Bioware will be stomped out one day. Other game companies have happened to this, and this is ha- going to happen to them. There's no denying that. Unless they can, well, you know, go to another publisher if they can, that is. But I'm assuming the but I'm assuming that the people who founded Bioware would leave first to start a new gaming company. At least this is what I believe. No, this is probably what is going to happen because history has shown this and it will repeat. Fuck you, EA. Also, I like to, I know I like to complain about Blizzard. I know Blizzard is not a, a div, it's not a publishing company; they are a development company, and they joined Activision. Good God. <sighs> And, you know, Diablo 3, I've not played it, but I've heard things about it, but this is one particular thing I've heard, is that you have to play, you have to be online to play single player, and I know this is a scheme to make more money. You know, Blizzard, you used to be, you used to be a well-respected gaming developer, and now you are just 
another greedy businessman. I know developers have to make money to make new games, but put some fucking passion into it. Don't make it like you're just doing it for the money, but you're doing it for people who love video games as well. <sighs> I know, I know. It's a bit of a, a pointless message to get out, especially when I'm in the, the backwaters of YouTube. Let's be honest about this. But Jesus Christ, man. I know. Well, you know, Diablo 3 is not called Diablo 3. Its real title, its real title is Diablo Kaching. <laughs> I mean, that's the pro, the most, a pretty much appropriate title for that game. Who I know, I know. And then actually, there's other things about between a game and, as I already said about the difference between a game and uh, the product. As a hey, what about Syndicate? And your EA somehow had rights to that. I think they had rights to that ages ago. Yeah, they did. Before they bring her back and make it into a first person sure. It just shows how much. It just shows how much. You know. The reason why there's not much uh, 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 imagination anymore is because publishers don't want to take a risk. You know, here's a game with a new idea or a. Like. It's a strange idea. You know, like games like um, Psychonauts and Beyond Good and Evil didn't got recognized, but they were unique and they were good games. You know? But people judged the book by its cover and went, no! I don't know why by I don't know why Beyond Good and, good and Evil got a 7 plus age rating. Because it featured human trafficking. <laughs> and I I don't want to I don't want to make it sound like People got put off by the age rating, which you shouldn't. But still, come on. I mean, I actually remember I went to a game store with my friend, and I saw Beyond Good and Evil, and I thought this looks interesting. And my my magazine gave a, a recent uh, a decent score, but this is before I know the horrible truth behind game reviewers that the well, they're bloody greedy bastards, and they usually don't give out good reviews. But I was gonna pick it up. And, you know, my friends was like, you know, that game is 7 plus, are you really going to get that? And of course, as a child, I didn't get it because, you know, I don't want to be remarked by them. Yeah, some friends I had. <laughs> I know, I know. If they ever say that to you, don't listen to them, just get it, you know? Unless it's Barbie's Horse Adventure, then we have really had to question you. Um, <laughs> I know. Uh, as a EA, Activision, and Blizzard, you greedy, greedy son of a bitches. I know. This is how this is how bad their greed has gotten, really. Oh, so, uh, there's other games as well. You know, the re that's like Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon wasn't made for the fans, but it was just made for the name, because the main the name can make money. And I don't know why Tom Clancy still do this. He's not a good storyteller. He's not he's a bit crap really, he's dull. I don't know how he can still write. I don't know, I need to do research on that and I need to talk about Ghost Recon one day. And go and Tom Clancy as well. But yeah, I, that's pretty much all I wanna say. It's not that constructive. But you know where I'm getting at? It's the publishers. And publishers have been doing this since the NES and the SNES days. But anyway, let's save this game. And continue on the let's play.